Hey, Mushroom Nerds. I want to share with you this glorious and beautiful collection of blushing Amanita mushrooms with you. This is one of many species of mushrooms that blush or stain a, an attractive mahogany red. They are edible. This specific species is called Amanita Flavo Rubens, or the yellow blusher. So blushers are very popular in Europe, uh, and a lot of people in the US do like them. And I will go into the features specifically about the yellow blusher in a moment, but I want to share with you the primary features of the uh, group of Amanita mushrooms that this falls into. Before I do that, I want to let you know that often when I find the yellow blusher mushroom, it is far more yellow on top. So I am going to validate my identification. And I say that because this mushroom, one way or the other, yellow blusher or another kind of edible blusher, it is in the section called Valley Day. So I'm going to validate my Valley Day identification of Amanita Flavo Rubens. All right, so let's get into identification features. First of all, uh, this is a mushroom you'll find in sort of mixed forest. You have a lot of oak in the area. I'm sitting beneath a holly tree getting my uh, butt pierced a little bit here. Uh, but these mushrooms are really distinctive, again, because of their blushing reaction. So as these mushrooms mature, uh, you'll see that they develop these sort of dark reddish streaks. It doesn't always appear on the cap, uh, but often it will appear in various places on the fruiting body. But most substantially, uh, you know, regardless, like if you have a blushing mushroom that has no blushing on the, the primary part of the fruiting body, what you will see almost always is that blushing reaction at the base of the stem, which is bulbous. And so you have a lot of Amanita mushrooms. I've got one right here. It's a Caesar mushroom and it's a gorgeous edible called Amanita jacksonii or the slender Caesar mushroom. As you can see, it's got this big old honking cup of tissue at the base. And so a lot of Amanita mushrooms, they have, you know, cups or big bulbs and sometimes like tube sock things, all kinds of stuff going on. But in the case of the Valley Day section, so your blushers, you just have this modest little bulb. And a lot of times you'll see insect damage too. So these little like pits where that reddish uh, stain is really, really evident. So uh, to that point, this is a really good example of a mushroom I would not take home with me to eat, even, uh, you know, because it is edible, it is definitely overly mature. But this particular specimen is really wonderful in my estimation because as it is dried out, you can see this beautiful ring on the stem. And it doesn't have a lot of features or ornamentation on it, so sometimes you'll have rings that, uh, you know, are a little bit floofy, uh, rings that fall apart very easily, are, are sort of, uh, you know, crumbly uh, or warty, all kinds of stuff. But in the case of your blushers, it's sort of plain. It is a little bit resilient, like there are some rings on stems that just fall right off. It's called a partial veil is the name of that feature. Uh, but the thing that I love about blushers is that they're kind of this simple partial veil, but they have this sort of like fringed dark, uh, you know, edge down at the very bottom. And I will show you this other one that is super pretty. So this is, uh, you know, a fully mature specimen. I would imagine it's starting to drop spores. You can see it has very pale gills and the nature of other Amanita, most other Amanita mushrooms. But uh, again, I want to highlight this sort of like simple, uh, you know, raised banded um, ring on the stem. And then you can see this sort of dark edge with a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a darkened sort of fringe, almost like a black fringe on the base of a whitish yellow uh, skirt that you'd go dancing in. All right, so uh, as far as your cap is concerned, 
um, Amanita um, mushrooms in the Valley Day section very often have warts. And in the case of the yellow blusher, those warts are yellow in color. That is something that, uh, you know, helps distinguish this specific species from the uh, other edible blushers. Um, in classic form, I lost my knife for a moment. So uh, we're back in shape. Uh, just to note, I am a notorious loser of knives. I've tried everything from lanyards to leashes to bright colors. And I actually recently picked up this sort of iridescent pocket knife and it is super shiny. And, and so it's way more effective or way harder to lose it, uh, at least thus far. I've had a couple of near misses like right under myself. That's what happens with my excitement with mushrooms. I try to control the rest of my environment, you know, my body, my accessories, my brush, etc. And it can be really difficult, especially when I find a collection of mushrooms that are in such beautiful shape. So this one right here is a really good um, sample as well of um, these yellow warts that also come off fairly easily and are fairly thin. And so they're almost like a little furry and fluffy. And as a result, if you get rain on it or even, you know, too much breeze, this can just slough right off. And so uh, a lot of times if you find a blusher, it'll look, uh, you know, a night after a rain, it'll look more like this. So you have a little bit of bruising and a little bit of stuff going on underneath the cap that starts to indicate some of that mahogany bruising uh, and some uh, activity at the base. Oh, and I didn't even notice. Look, there's our classic little pit. Um, I think primarily those are for centipedes, like the ones that smell like formic acid or those like stinky ants. And so a lot of times I get really cool pictures of these when they're mature, like definitely past the point I'd want to bring them home and eat them with these really cool little uh, bugs, you know, crawling out of the pits. And that's just, it's everything that a mushroom botherer wants to see in this world. Okay, so to conclude, I think as with many other Amanita mushrooms or wild mushrooms that are edible, you want to be cautious. And uh, in the case of many Amanitas, you want to go with younger specimens. So when you start to see a ton of open gill material, sometimes it can get to hard to cook them and they soak up a lot of oil. Uh, but you know, I just usually take a very few, you know, wild Amanitas home with me and snack on them. Uh, you know, there are a lot of amanitologists who are very experienced and eat a lot of them. And I'm not, you know, frightened that I'm going to misidentify an amanita. I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm not worried I'll pick up one of the, uh, you know, dangerous poisonous ones. But that said, you know, there are a lot of other mushrooms I really enjoy and more to the point. Uh, when mushroom season is in full flight, which it currently is, I get obsessed with taking photographs and making these little home movies. And so the amount of time that I have for actually foraging and filling my bag is uh, truncated by my desire to share my passion with you. I hope that you find some of these mushrooms. I also hope that I got uh, this right. And, uh, you know, if not, the qualification being it could be Amanita amerirubescens species group, which isn't much better, well, actually far less good than the likely identification because amerirubescens species group is just like American blushing mushrooms. And it is representative of a lot of different uh, species that are either provisional or uh, being named or being rolled out, all those things that happen when we deploy new taxonomy and uh, classify species with more specificity. Uh, I think final thing that I do wanna show you when I take this apart is uh, the um, mahogany staining also shows up very frequently on your gills. And so that's something, you know, this yellowish ring, the yellowish warts, and also these whitish, you know, white as opposed to sort of like a pale, sometimes these blushers are gray or whitish gray on top and their, uh, their gills are a little less creamy white. 
But anyway, I have held forth at greater lengths than I intended. I hope you find a billion mushrooms. Let's talk again as soon as possible.